All right. So I mentioned briefly that Washington vetoed Hamilton's method due to that, you know, it not really being fair. And so that's when Congress adopted Jefferson's method, which was used between 1791 through 1842. Again, just giving you that extra information, I would not test you on the history behind all of this. My job is only the math. I do want to say one more time, <laughs> I might annoy you. Again, read your text to actually see some context about Jefferson and how him owning slaves really played a part in history as well. So Jefferson's method is steps one through three are the same. And what those were is we got to find the total population. We got to f divide by the number of seats there are to find our divisor. And let's actually just go ahead and revisit. We have to find the quota and then we have to find the initial. All right, the step four is what's different. So let's just go through those steps again, which will be good practice because these are all the same for all the methods, which is nice. We already found the total, okay? We also already found the divisor. So let's just put that down. There's nothing different there. And to find your quota, again, you divide each FTE by your divisor. And to save us time, we already did that. And so you would look at your previous page, but so I don't make you dizzy, I have it written down on my paper right here, so I'm just gonna write it. So when I divide 8,871 divided by 516.24 repeating, I get 17.18372. When I divide cascade, I get 9.373. When I divide Rock Creek, I get 13.16624. When I divide Southeast, I get 5.2727. All right. Now what it wants us to do is it's still, it says step one through three are the same. So let's go take a look. I am going to get you a little dizzy. <laughs> it says find, step three says find the initial by cutting off the decimals, but we don't want to lose them. So I'm going to keep, I'm going to go back. Same deal. It might get a little tight in here. Okay. Um, so just be prepared for that. So if I just cut these guys off, that will give me my initial. So I'm left with 17, 9, 13, 5. But like we know from the previous problem, we're one short. So the next step, which is different. Now, just to refresh your memory, Hamilton's method just said, okay, you give the extra seats to whoever has the biggest decimal. Now, Jefferson's method says we need to find a modified divisor. And this is by trial and error. And you need to increase it or decrease it. Um, the hint that I wanted to give you is once you find it, just really make sure uh, your final number adds to the correct number of, I'm just going to say seats. You know, for us, it's math instructors, you know, it, it changes on us. So just make sure that's a good way to check your work. Now, I will be the first one to admit um, this is going to seem a little tedious. And it gets better with time, I promise. Now, what you need to do is you need to modify this divisor. So, I mean, you know. Jeff could say, okay, well, I'm going to divide by two. And Susie could say, I'm going to divide by a thousand. It's not that open-ended, okay? We know we just need one more seat. And our divisor is 516, roughly, all right? Because I only need one more seat, my modified divisor, something I'm just going to choose, okay, should be pretty darn close to 516. If I needed more seats, then maybe I would get further away from my true divisor. So like the first thing I do is I'm just gonna try something. Now, if I do, 
if I divide by, I'm just going to say 500, all right? Now, what I do there is if I take, again, I just chose that randomly, all right? Now, the other thing is, let me be clear of this, because we need one seat, our modified divisor should be less than our current divisor because that would create more decimals. Um, that might become more clear the more we do this. All right, so when I just take, and again, to save time, I'm just gonna do it myself, 8871, and I divide by 500, I get 17.74-ish. When I do 4841 and I divide by 500, I get 9.68. When I do 67 divided by 5, sorry, 6797 divided by 500, I get 13.59. And then when I do 2722 divided by 500, I get 5.55. Now here is the issue, and I wanted to show you this because it will happen on your own. Nothing got pushed up. And so Jefferson's method says, okay, you gotta choose a new divisor that will clearly push one of these campuses to have an extra seat. And I'll, I'm gonna show you what I mean by that in a minute. But right now I'm still stuck because if I cut off my decimals, I still only have 17, 9, 13, 5. Nothing got pushed up. So I have to try another divisor. I'm going to again, I'm just like picking out of thin air, although I'm using some strategy behind it. Well, I know it still needs to be less than 500 to push me up. So I'm going to choose now. I'm going to get rid of this final for a second. Now I'm just going to go a little bit lower and choose 490. And this is honestly the process. It's a little tedious. <laughs> All right, so now when I do 8,871 and I divide it by 490, oh, this is looking good so far, I get 18.10. So that pushed it up to 18. Here's the thing you have to be careful of. Don't be like, okay, my life is good, I'm done. You gotta make sure then the other campuses stay where they need to stay, otherwise you're gonna have too many full-time instructors. So then when I do 4,841, divide that by 490, I get 9.88, so so far looking good, because it's gonna keep it at nine, because I don't care about the decimals in these methods, or at least the last two I've seen. Uh, when I do 6,797, I divide that by 490, I get 13.87, so that's looking good. And then when I do southeast and I divide that by 490, I get 5.55. And so when you don't look at these decimals, because that's what Jefferson's method asks us to do, we end up, so this should be final, we end up getting 18 full-time instructors for Savannah, 9 for Cascade, Rock Creek gets 13, and Southeast gets 5. And when I add those all up, that was my hint, I do get 45, so I know I've done it right. So my modified divisor, which is like how my open math will ask you, will be 490. Okay? Again, it seems really challenging because you're just like, well, what would I choose? Use some strategy behind it, okay? So I want to be close to 500. I don't want to be terribly far away from it because I only need one more seat. Now, with Jefferson's method, we have no guarantee it follows something known as the quota rule. And the quota rule says the final number of representatives a state gets should be within one of the state's quota. 
What does that mean? So remember, this was our quota, right? Now we didn't see it here with this example, but there were some issues in history where we would find our quota and um, it would be too far off. Well, the, sorry, let me say this again. The final number, so see how 18 is within one of that, right? Nine is definitely just nine, 13, 13, five, five. So this is meeting the quota rule. What wouldn't meet the quota rule is if I did Sylvania with my modified divisor and I got my final to be like 20, right? It's not within one of those. So that issue came about when doing all the math to figure out the household representatives for each state. And so that's why we're like, nope, we got to get rid of this method. And now we have to come up with a new one. And that will bring us to Webster's method, which will be in the next video.